Let's start by going over the homework problem from lesson one, and then we'll move on to lesson two. So as we said in the last video, the two girls are moving equally fast around the track. And this is page three, by the way, of lesson one. So equally fast means one is not getting further ahead than the other. Another, it means that the second person is not getting further behind. They're staying the same distance apart because they're going the same speed. So Sue started before Julie. So that means Sue's ahead and she's going to stay ahead by the same amount. So Sue had nine laps. And at the same time, Julie had run three laps. So we need to so decide whether additive reasoning makes sense on this one or multiplicative reasoning. So you can look up above at number eight and nine. Eight was an example of additive reasoning because we kept adding four to get to James. Nine, we said it made more sense to do multiplicatively because this group tripled in size, why this group was just one and a half times larger. So we need to decide which of those two is as I look at the data that I've written down, I can say Sue is six laps ahead of Julie, or I can say Sue has run three times further than Julie. So just looking at just those two things, that makes sense. But like I showed you with eight, do another one and compare it, and then that'll tell you. So if Sue runs another lap, she then has run 10 laps, correct? And if Sue ran another lap, so did Julie, because they're going equally fast. So Julie will now have four laps. And I'll show you why I'm doing this in a second. So here we said Sue was six laps ahead of Julie. And remember, she won't get any further than six laps because she's there running equally fast. Julie or Sue was three times further than Julie. So let's look here and see which one of those applies. Is Sue six laps ahead of Julie? Yes. Is Sue three times further than Julie? No. So that tells me this is not multiplicative reasoning because three times three is nine, but four times three is not 12. So we can see it's additive because we're adding six to get to Sue adding six to get to Sue, or you could think of it as subtracting six to get to Julie, subtracting six. So this is definitely additive reasoning, which they're going to ask at the end. So let's see if we can make up a scenario like we did in number eight. So Julie plus six laps equals Sue. So Julie plus six laps equals Sue. So we can use that equation to help us, or we could have done Sue minus six equals Julie, Sue minus six equals Julie, and it doesn't matter. They're the same thing. So now they said Julie ran 15 laps. So let's put 15 in. 15 plus 6 is 21. That means Sue had run 21 laps. And then verify that it's correct, because we said whatever Julie has, you add 6. Whatever Julie has, 
you add 6. So if Julie had 15, 15 plus 6 is in fact 21. So we can see that is the correct answer for the first part. Then it asks us, is this additive, multiplicative, or both? Add 6, add 6. It's additive reasoning. Multiplicative doesn't make sense because although it's times 3 to get here, it's not times 3 to get there. So it's not both either. It's just additive reasoning is what we used. Sue will always be six laps ahead of Julie because they're running the same speed. Okay, let's go ahead and look at our next packet. If you haven't printed it yet, go ahead and print it. It's labeled Module 3, Lesson 2. I have already filled it out because I did this video already and it wouldn't download. It froze my computer. So I will demonstrate the answers as we do these so that you can see where I got my answers from. So we're going to be working with fraction circles and it's telling us use the red fraction circle to count as the whole. And they have to tell us what the whole is because if they don't tell us, then we don't know what's considered whole, because I could consider this a whole. It just depends what the directions say. So they're starting us off easy, because most of us think of it as a whole circle as being the whole 100%. So that stands for one, and we know that because it says the red circle represents the unit, which means one whole. We should write that in one hole. And it says a pink represents what fractional value? So here's the pink. And this is really fun to do in class. I'm sad we didn't get to do it because we have manipulatives for everyone and you can sit and work on it at your table. But since we're at home, we'll just have to uh, be happy with what we have. So what part of the red hole is pink? And I think everybody agrees it's half. Half of the hole is the pink piece. And another way you can look at it is it takes two pinks to make a red. That's how we know pink is one half. Next we do yellow. So we're looking at the red. What part of the red, we'll get rid of this pink just to make it easier to see. So what part of the red is yellow? Well, if we put all the yellows in, we see that four yellows make a hole. Therefore, that means that one yellow is one fourth of the hole. So four yellows make a hole. Therefore, one yellow is one-fourth, because four make a whole. Next, we have purple. Let's move this into... So purple, I'm going to put the pink back on, because sometimes with these littler pieces, it's easier to look at it as half a circle and then just double your answer. So if we take the purple and fill up the pink. We see the purple pieces, five of them make a half. So five purple pieces make a half. That means 10 will make a whole. Therefore, one purple piece is going to be one tenth of the whole. So one purple piece is one-tenth of the whole because it takes ten to make a whole. Next we're going to look at black. So if we put all these blacks in. Oops. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can see six blacks make half of the circle. So that means 12 will make the whole circle, right? So 12 make a whole because six make half. So if 12 make a whole, that means one piece is going to be one twelfth of the whole circle because 12 make a whole, one piece would be one twelfth. Okay, next we're going to look at teal. So I'll keep this in. So when we look at teal, we can see three teal make a half. So three more added to that would make a whole. So does everyone agree? Six teal make a whole circle. That means one piece is going to be one sixth. And last but not least, we have orange. So orange, you can see three oranges make a whole. So if three oranges make a whole, what part of the tri or what part of the circle is one orange? It would be one third. So three pieces make a whole, making one piece count as one third. Okay, so next we're going to use a rectangle as the whole, but I just want to remind you later on in this section we're going to say, okay, this is the whole. Now tell me what part blue is. So I just want you to keep in mind that red isn't always the whole. It's whatever the directions tell us. On this one it did tell us the red circle represents the whole unit. But just keep in mind that's not always the case. If this is the whole, then you could see that turquoise would be one half, or teal, I guess they called it. So just keep that in mind because a lot of students just get stuck on this red and they go, oh, that's the whole circle. Well, it's only the whole unit if they tell you it is, which they did in this one. Red is the whole unit, but we'll be switching up units, you'll see, in upcoming sections. Okay, let's turn over and look at second page. So on the second page, we're using a rectangle instead of a circle, which is fine. We've used rectangles. Remember we used those in module two. The rectangle was the whole and we would split it into pieces. So this one says use that rectangle, it's the whole, and show what one fourth would look like. So again, we did that in our last section, our last module, I should say, not last section. And we learned how to cut it in half and then cut each piece in half. And so each of these is a fourth. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is four fourths which makes the whole. And so to represent one fourth, we'd shade in one piece. So they want us to describe the meaning of one fourth. Remember our, our copies language. So one fourth means one copy of one fourth. If it was two fourths, we'd say two fourths means two copies of one fourth. If it was three fourths, then we'd say one fourth Three-fourths means three copies of one-fourth, but this is just one-fourth, so we'd write one-fourth means one copy of one-fourth. And you can see we only have one shaded, so that's one copy of one-fourth. 